Are you wasting your time in how you're learning to code? The reality is millions of people every year around the world try to learn to code, whether it's through courses, college, books, YouTube videos, tutorials, it really doesn't matter. Most of them end up giving up. And a big reason for people quitting and falling off is because motivation is a finite resource. And it doesn't matter if you're learning to code or trying to get in shape or lose weight. If you don't pick a pathway that is effective and makes you feel like you're making progress, you're going to end up having a burst of hard work, but eventually you're gonna feel like you're paddling, but you're not getting anywhere. And that's incredibly frustrating, demotivating, and then you quit. Now, I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, and over the last decade, my programs have helped thousands of people, whether boot camps, enterprises, or universities, learn how to code in an effective way that gets them where they want to go without losing all their motivation. So I'm going to share with you the three key components of a learning pathway that are going to help you meet your goals. And the third thing you're going to want to stick around for because it is the thing that is missing or inadequate in most of the learning options on the market today. So the first thing that an effective learning experience needs is quality content. And by quality content, I mean a couple things. Number one, the content needs to be up to date. Technology changes fast and it's legitimately difficult for authors to keep their content up to date. And if you're a self learner, this is even harder because you're running around the internet, you're looking for videos, you're looking for tutorials, and these things tend to lag the market. And a lot of times, especially with tutorials on some random blog, they put it up and they move on. And then when you come across it a couple years later, it doesn't do the things that you expect it to do because the frameworks and the languages have moved on and evolved. But the second key component of quality content is not taking shortcuts. A big issue with micro courses and blogs and videos is that a lot of those authors are trying to demonstrate particular things and they're trying to do it as quickly as possible. So if there are ancillary things that you need to know or shortcuts that they can take, they will often use them to get to the point. And, you know, again, raise your hand if you've experienced this, you're watching a tutorial or a video and the author does something that isn't related to the actual problem. They use a shortcut key on the keyboard or they call a function or use a method and you've never seen it before. And then you're, you hit pause and you're like, oh my gosh, what was that? What did they just do there? That's something that happens when content creators aren't targeting the things that support what they're trying to learn. And then there's another thing that's even more insidious called expert blind spot. And that's when somebody like me who has a lot of experience is explaining something to a learner and we use terms or we assume that you know certain basic things that we just take for granted. And then when we're explaining, you miss the point entirely because you get stuck on one of those ancillary things. So when you're crafting quality courseware and quality learning experiences, you need to make sure to remove that magic and build things up incrementally so that the learner knows what is expected as a prerequisite for what you're trying to teach currently. And that's something that takes planning and discipline and often the help of an instructional designer or a third party helper. And a lot of people just don't have those resources, which is why their courseware has those gaps where the learner all of a sudden goes, whoa, what did they just do there? Now, assuming that the content is of quality, which means it's up to date and it covers all those gaps, the other thing you really need is hands-on practice. And too many times I see people using video courses and following along with other people's code and just kind of parroting what they're typing in. And then they're surprised when they can't actually build anything. And this is no different. I mean, if you want to learn how to play guitar or play piano, you can watch YouTube videos of people playing all day. But if you don't get to put your hands on the strings or the keys 
and you don't start with learning your fingering and learning how to hold your hands and learning your scales and all those basics and practice those things, you are not going to be good at the instruments. And in the same way, you're not going to be good at coding. And this is why I tend to avoid in my courseware doing a lot of video content. There is video content there because there are certain things where it is used to be effective, but there is something to be said for written detailed lessons and then providing hands-on exercises. And these exercises fall into a couple different categories. You have something I call show, do, reflect. And when I introduce a concept, the first thing you do is show the concept and you explain it. And then you have the person do, and they try to use that concept in a very isolated environment where there's not distractions from other components or things going on, and they can just focus on practicing the thing you showed them. And then there's this concept called reflection, and this is where a lot of content providers fall down. With reflection, you need to check to see if they understand. Now, sometimes that means taking that concept and putting it into a bigger project, like a capstone, so that you show that you can integrate it in a bigger picture or integrate it in different ways that you've been shown. And another thing I like to do in my courses is we progressively build up applications. So I will have exercises and applications in my courses, like early on, you're writing everything in the main method and it's all one big blob of code. And then later on, we start refactoring it into classes and using separation of concerns. And then later on, we start layering in interfaces and polymorphism and unit testing. But we're progressively building that application. And as a reflection exercise, this allows the learner to look at the before and the after so that they can see how that application evolved and understand better why the professional techniques of polymorphism and unit testing and dependency injection make a difference in the learning. And that really, that reflection is key to building the understanding. Because the other thing you're going to have to do if you wanna be a professional developer is explain what you know to interviewers. And if you have that experience of progressively enhancing applications and applying those professional principles, you are going to be better prepared to interview and share what you know. And that brings us to the third thing that most learning options are missing, and it's feedback. Feedback is scientifically proven to be one of the best accelerants to skill acquisition. And it's the thing that most learning options are missing when you look out at the universe of ways that you can learn to code. So if you have feedback available, you're going to spend less time being stuck. You're going to spend less time being frustrated. A skilled mentor is going to keep you from going down rabbit holes and chasing shiny things that are going to be interesting maybe, but ultimately take you away from your goals. There is a proven pathway that people use in courseware to go from zero to coding hero, and a mentor is going to enforce that pathway and keep you moving in the direction you need to go and keep that motivation up. And again, this is because your motivation is finite. And if you take the scenic route, it might be interesting, but chances are you're going to run out of gas and you're not going to get to your destination. And the other important thing that a skilled mentor giving you feedback can provide is analysis of how your skills are lining up to a professional skills. Because there are many ways to solve coding problems. But there are certain ways that professionals favor, certain ways of organizing, certain ways of naming things, and a professional mentor who gives you this feedback is going to be able to shape your output to look more professional. And this is the same in other concepts like writing. I mean, you can write a paper, but if you write a paper using MLA or AMA format, it's going to look different and it's going to look more professional than somebody who just writes using colloquial language. 
And at the end of the day, feedback is one of the biggest differentiators between free, cheap, and premium learning options. Because the people who sign up for more premium options, like courses that have mentorship, boot camps, university programs, or even if you take it out of the coding space, getting a personal trainer to get in shape, these premium feedback loops are highly motivating for individuals. Number one, you're paying for it. And when you invest in yourself and you put skin in the game, that helps with completion rates and it helps with your motivation. And then on top of that, when you have somebody watching over you and looking out for you and you start to slack off, in the back of your mind, you're thinking about that next meeting where you're going to show up to that meeting and you haven't hit your short-term goals and you're going to have to explain to another human being why that's so. And that pressure really helps people. And I can tell you that from personal experience. A few years ago when I was trying to get into better shape, I started out, I bought a weight set and I started, you know, lifting some weights and going for jogs. And, you know, I was just so inconsistent because days that I didn't feel like doing it or days I had excuses, I just wouldn't do it. And then I hired a personal trainer. And when I was held accountable by a personal trainer, I completed all of my objectives and I got in the best shape of my life because I knew that if I didn't do the things they asked me to do, they would know the next time we showed up to work out together and I was going to have to explain that to them. And I'm not a person who likes to explain failure. So that motivation and that premium experience that you get from having feedback and mentorship, it's something that if you can afford it and you're really serious about hitting your goals of being a software developer, I highly encourage you to find a pathway that has real professional mentorship that requires both of you to invest in each other. Now, I've been in technical training for over a decade, and before that, I was a software architect and I was mentoring team members. So I've seen how these three factors really boost people's learning and increases their rate of success and hitting their goals. So if you want a curated path into programming that has these things, come on over and check out Skill Foundry because that program is built using all these lessons I've learned over the years. And if Skill Foundry isn't for you, at least now you know the three things that you need to look for if you're trying to be effective in your learning experience. Happy coding. Thank <sweak> you.